Hello all and welcome back. I hope you're doing really well. Thank you yet again for the love and support on the previous video. As I've said a million times, I seriously appreciate it. That being said, if you guys aren't subscribed to this YouTube channel, what are you doing? <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed. Tons more crypto news and content and obviously a lot more information on Hedera. That being said as well, in the coming week or so, I'm aiming to have a follow-up conversation um, with Stader Labs. So as I did previously before their launch of their V1 product, we will be chatting again and I'll be releasing a video talking about their V2 product, the features we can expect um, and lots more information surrounding that. So hopefully you guys will be around for that as it will be a great place um, in order to get some more information about the V2 launch. That being said, if you guys have any questions that are burning in the back of your mind surrounding V2 of Stader Labs, make sure you drop those in the comments and I will take those on board and feed back to Stader themselves. That being said, lots to cover again in today's video. As per usual, let's jump straight into the market overview. So on the fear and greed index, we're still sitting at a 12, no change from yesterday. Realistically, equities are still bleeding out and there potentially could be further moves towards the downside as I've reiterated in plenty of other videos. This is obviously where you guys need to make the decision as to whether you want to try and wait um, or you are in it for the long run and your dollar cost averaging your positions. I said before, my um, beliefs effectively reside in the latter category, which is I dollar cost average into these blue chip projects over the long term. And I don't really let the short term price action rattle me too much. Uh, that being said, if we take a quick look at the crypto bubbles, majority of the markets are down in the red zone today. Um, very few projects that are in the green. Um, as we can see here, you know, Quant's down nearly 4% on the day again. Hedera, actually not too bad, 0.5% down on the day. Um, XLM over here, down nearly a percent on the day. So plenty of buying opportunities here. As I said before, the three that I'm really prioritizing at the moment due to the uh, massive um, drawbacks they've kind of had slash potential for the future are obviously Hedera, Quant, and Chainlink being two interoperability solutions. And I am obviously picking up some more XLM as I can, as that is still seriously undervalued. There are obviously other great buying opportunities here as well. You could always pick up some Ethereum. We've got some other layer ones here, Algorand and Near, which will both do very well into the future. Arweave is a bit of a uh, curveball that I've owned for a while, um, which is worth picking up if you do some more research on it. I've not covered that too much on the channel. Engine, of course, great buying opportunity there. I have covered that on the channel in the past. Um, obviously, we've got XRP as well. I've said before my thoughts and feelings on XRP. Really waiting to see some more news from that um, SEC case realistically before I decide to average back into that. Um, for those of you who've watched my previous videos, you guys will know that I've held XRP since around 2016, 2017. So um, just before that massive run up we saw, um, and then obviously the crash where it's been ever since the SEC uh, injunction was filed against them. Looking across, just a quick update on Luna. Um, so yesterday we said Terra 2.0 is coming. Tomorrow it arrives to the 28th of May. Um, so it got pushed back a day. Um, it will be launching at around 6 a.m. UTC, so Universal Coordinated Time. Um, that being said, I'm not going to read the rest of this uh, thread. There's a long Twitter thread over on there other than the... Um, Tweet number 15 here. So users who receive the airdrop through centralized exchanges should check with the exchange for details on how the Luna airdrop will work. Our partner exchanges have done a great job of communicating these details and we've been retweeting the announcements as they drop. So as I mentioned in that previous video I released, um, if you've got it in a non-custodial wallet, i.e. MetaMask or something, don't do anything with it. Leave it where it is. You'll receive the airdrop anyway. If it's on a centralized exchange because you bought it through that centralized exchange, make sure that exchange is listed as a sort of cooperative partner with Luna 2.0's airdrop um, to ensure you get it. And then not only that, check the policy um, with that centralized exchange to make sure you understand how you're going to receive that airdrop. You may have to claim something or do whatever, and it's going to vary from exchange to exchange. So it's not something that can be easily covered. That being said as well, they have now confirmed that Terra will be burning the remaining UST supply. Um, so there was a vote where there was 99.39% in favor effectively to burn the remaining UST supply. So um, realistically, the rest of this is going to go. Um, 
and I'm pretty sure now the LUNC or LUNC, the Lunar Classic, which is what it's being renamed to, is pretty much going to drop down to nothing. Um, I, I wouldn't really be touching that, and I'm obviously staying away from Luna 2.0 as well. That being said, Coin Market Cap has now listed the new Luna token and has reflected those changes. Obviously, there's no market cap yet for uh, Terra Luna 2.0. Um, that'll be coming out tomorrow. And then, of course, if you type in LUNC, um, over here we can see that's now been renamed to Terra Classic and that is the LUNC token which was previously Luna. It's a little bit confusing um, at the moment. Looking over anyway, these are the exchanges that will be supporting Luna 2.0. So there's a few more from when I first mentioned it. We've got Binance, KuCoin, LBank, Crypto.com, FTX, Bitfinex, Kraken, Hubwe, um, or Hubwe, uh, Bitru, uh, Gatio, BitGet, MECX, Bybit, HitBC, BTC, uh, OKCoin, and OKX. So these are the guys that are supporting this. So make sure you're checking the terms with those providers if you're using them. Funny tweet reply there from Mitch at the bottom who's ready to be scammed a third time. Raise your hand. Brilliant stuff. Anyway, let's jump into some positive news uh, or news about the rest of the market. So $520 million, unfortunately, has been liquidated from cryptocurrency market in the last 24 hours. As I said before, we're continuing to see a bleed out across these markets at the moment. Equities are not performing any better as of yet either. That being said, there is still a ton of positive sentiment coming out around cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. So, for example, billionaire Bill Miller has just said Bitcoin is an insurance policy against financial catastrophe. So they're basically, in his words, calling it a safe haven or a hedge uh, against uncertain markets. People that believe in crypto, tons of different CEOs and co-founders of not only some of the biggest tech companies in the world, but some of the biggest investment banks in the world. Now, you can take this from two perspectives. These tech companies are obviously or potentially believe in cryptocurrency for the future because it integrates well with their uh, technology stack and they see it as a, um, a future way in order to process uh, or do conduct their business effectively. And then you've got the investment banks because they see it as an opportunity to make money into the future. You Tesla, Uber, Apple, Nvidia, PayPal, Airbnb, Google, Microsoft, MasterCard CEOs. You've got the Meta co-founder, Apple co-founder, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter co-founders, and then the investment bank CEOs of Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Charles Schwab, some of the biggest across the globe all believe in cryptocurrency over the long term. That being said as well, one of the big four, particularly over here in the UK of audit companies, KPMG, is also planning to hire three and a half thousand people in the UK for its digital expansion. Um, so they're clearly as well banking on the fact that cryptocurrencies and digital uh, or digitalization of sort of financial markets and, uh, and the like are going to continue to expand into the future. That is the sole reason for them hiring three and a half thousand people. That is a serious, serious number. That's a lot a lot of people, some mid-sized businesses don't even have three and a half thousand employees. So that is a very, very positive sign. Interesting chart here as well from JP Morgan that shows a lot of similarities between Bitcoin and gold. And as we probably all know on this channel, that gold is typically touted as a hedge against inflation. You tend to see commodity prices rise uh, during high inflation areas, particularly when there is a lack of faith in um, traditional currencies, for example, the US dollar, gold prices, um, as well as silver, platinum, etc., will rise. And we're seeing this strong correlation between Bitcoin and gold as a hedge against measures like that. So we could actually see Bitcoin start to gain positive momentum towards the upside if this uh, fear of the US economy uh, continues to play out in the way that it is. Jumping across and talking about some Hedera related news now. Um, HBAR Foundation is absolutely on fire yet again, and they have announced another partnership, this one being with Vavil Games, a leading game studio bringing the next generation of MMO games to Hedera through the launch of Vavilverse. So Vavilverse will create a series of interlinked and cross-integrated virtual worlds in the Hedera ecosystem, starting with the integration of NFTs into Vavil's first title Imperium, Galactic War 3.0. You can learn more about their vision in this latest blog. I'll flick over onto that into a second. However, this is absolutely brilliant to see. HBAR Foundation is really driving forward that metaverse narrative on Hedera. You know, they are moving out into several different branches of the crypto space, be it metaverse, decentralized finance, um, gaming, all sorts of different things Hedera is striving to improve and sort of take market share from, which is brilliant to see.
if we flick over and just look at this article that was published about this on the HBAR Foundation's site here, we can see Baffle Games was founded in 2014, successful gaming studio entering Web 3.0. The company is using its proprietary tech stack to launch a gaming metaverse, Battleverse, a network of compatible, interchangeable games that players can play using the same account and without losing the in-game assets. This is absolutely massive. If any of those of you that have played titles such as Call of Duty or FIFA will know one of the real sticking points um, of those games for example is there is a new iteration every single year and all that progress and content and microtransactions are all lost as soon as you migrate across to the new title now fortnite sort of came into this area if we're talking about mass multiplayer games um, and revamp that whole system with things like battle passes and cross seasonal content the next stage um, to that sort of development cycle would be these um, not only sort of the same game and the microtransactions carry across but the an account that effectively ties across all of those so those in-game assets move with the player throughout different games rather than tied to a specific ecosystem really really bullish stuff and could command a serious amount of attention if this rolls out successfully that being said another fantastic uh, twitter thread here by danny Eade. Um, just talking about Hedera in general and looking more at some of the on-chain metrics. So metric he's focusing on here is TVR, total value represented. Um, and this was in a recent chat um, between DL Thiel, which is Toco's DLA Piper. Um, how much valuable stuff is actually being represented in a tokenized form on your protocol and how much of it is being traded? So the TVR has been a great and really represents the DeFi activities and the locking up of virtual assets. But I think this pivot towards where does enterprise trust is actually going to be fascinating transition. Soul bound NFTs where it sticks to the actual asset itself and that intrinsic value like your degree from whatever university should all be SBTs. And those are in a nutshell TVR for enterprise. So it's talking about this um, idea effectively of a metric for enterprise that they can trust. What you've seen with Terra Money recently, you suddenly have lots of orphaned projects because there's a protocol collapse in it effectively. Some of those protocols we work with, you know, they pride themselves on building a hundred year company. I he's hinting at Hedera here. Um, we've been working with the Shy FT network, such as Joseph Weinberg and the team at, at Shift, who have provided a decentralized. Um, network. It's effectively a FATF compliance. FATF is the global AML KYC framework that's coming out globally, so KYC being know your customer. A lot of that information retention. And then we've also got Hong Kong beer brand, um, who's good friend and former colleague of mine, Ian Jebit. We're about to do an NFT project initially starting in the UK. will be a global rollout and the NFT is going to be a real consumer engagement NFT. One of the things we've been working with both at OX Polygon and this beer brand is just figuring out this beer verse. It's potentially in Decentraland, and there's a place you can go take this NFT, redeem it for your voting power. Fire Token launched recently in the context of Sparkera Games. This is going to involve projects or products, digitalized versions and branded products that are then going to appear in loot boxes, which will provide features and functions within the game. And we see Toco is using better technologies. We are leveraging next-gen blockchain uh, platforms such as Hedera and others, which allow us to create tokens, which are much cheaper in terms of gas prices, in terms of speed and finality with fair time stamping. So some bullish uh, information here across the cryptoverse, and obviously a lot of it revolving around Hedera itself. That announcement from State of Hedera has obviously been dropped now. Redefining Hedera is live. You can win up to 1,500 HBAR weekly if you create a video, infographic, or thread on any one of the topics. DeFi on Hedera slash Stada, HBARX or staking. Fill out a form and then submit it between Sunday and Saturday, so seven days. Winners will be announced following Wednesday. Judge of the week will be the HBAR ball. So there's an opportunity here for you guys to win some HBAR yourself if you participate in this. Great to see them helping to expand the DeFi ecosystem over on Hedera. As I said, I will be having a follow-up conversation with them about their V2 product launch. Another brilliant tweet by HBAR to the moon. Hedera is the perfect DLT for gaming applications. Most popular MMO games today are all about high quality graphics, speed and efficiency, which means gamers won't accept slow, effect, inefficient and expensive blockchain integrations. Transition to Web 3.0 will be seamless with Hedera, HBAR and NFTs. Um, so again, just another use case of Hedera. And it, it all stems back to this vision that Mance and Lehman had when they initially built the DLT 
um, to have this ability to be scalable, efficient, fast, um, transactions with finality and transparent. And that's going to lend itself very well to a lot of these growing ecosystems like Web 3.0, like the metaverse, um, like sort of bigger gaming projects, etc. Another great tweet as well from Parabolic HBAR, just talking about the marketing that Hedera and the HBAR Foundation have been doing to raise awareness for not only Hedera, Hashgraph and HBAR, um, but also because it's the greenest, most used enterprise grade crypto blockchain. So a couple of things over here appearing ads now on Google, Hedera Hashcraft, the public DLT for enterprise, which is a nice slogan. And there's also one, uh, a new article that they're touting, which is Hedera versus Algorand and Hedera versus Polkadot. So proof of stake based DLT energy consumption are at least three orders of magnitude lower than Bitcoin. So comparing these layer one solutions versus incumbents like Bitcoin. Another fantastic thread as well by Coinman the HBarbarian. So crypto mass adoption will be an invisible revolution. In 2023, the majority of grocery shopping was done in the US uh, will be utilizing HBAR. Let me qualify that statement. The Coupon Bureau are currently onboarding the world's largest CPG companies to their new digital coupons. Soon, every digital coupon offering e.g. X off a bulk buy of diapers to millions of ordinary consumers will pass through the Hedera mainnet and the fees will be accrued, uh, will ultimately result in staking yield for HBAR holders. Mass adoption. Only HBAR variants will know. Um, learn more about the trust layer for digital coupons and how Hedera consensus service will provide trust, transparency and auditability to all authorized parties in the digital coupon lifecycle from creation, redemption to expiration. I've touched on the coupon bureau many, many times on this channel in the past. They are a massive, massive use case for Hedera. And obviously we've got other things like Atma.io as well, where we will be seeing literally billions of transactions coming to Hedera from these partnerships and use cases. You know, it is literally happening as we speak. Things are moving in the background. Things are developing. This was all confirmed by Mance himself on that recent um, interview with the HBAR ball. Tons of uh, bullish stuff to be excited about for Hedera in the future. Anyway, guys, that wraps up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you did, leave it a like, drop a comment. If you've got something you want to know about the V2 staking product for Stata Hedera, make sure you drop something in the description, uh, the comments, and I will make sure that they get relayed. That being said, if you're not subscribed, make sure you are. Follow me on Twitter if you do use it. Lots of content posted on there too. Until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.